uh, hello everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's so great to be here and to have time for discussing these things. Um, my name is Wayne Robert. I've been with the Health Initiative for Men for three years now. Prior to that, I was working with uh, governance in First Nations in Northern British Columbia. And prior to that, I was the uh, the general manager of the educational broadcaster there, um, which would be similar to Tele Quebec or or TV Ontario for those of you who don't know. It's Knowledge Network in British Columbia. So, uh, the, so coming to this area uh, was a, a new area for me, and uh, I certainly have relied upon the people that I work with. Uh, so Jody will also be presenting uh, the last half. Uh, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about organizational challenges and how we are trying to work with the Internet. And then we will be, uh, Jody will be talking a little more about the actual programs which we're delivering. So I'll just launch ahead and, and try and move along as quickly as I can because... Um, Jody will be chasing me. Uh, so I want to talk, you know, in order to understand what we do at him, you need to understand a little bit about our mission. So our mission is to strengthen gay men's health and well-being. When we talk about gay men, we really talk about the greater uh, community of gay men. So that includes trans men and men who are having sex with men and uh, men who both identify as gay and those who are involved with men who identify as gay. Uh, we do this really in three ways. And so there's a lot of words up there, but the ones that I bolded are the ones that are, are, are the three uh, areas that we move in. Uh, first, we use uh, trusted, tailored, and targeted research-based health promotion. So all of those words have meaning for us. We want to be the health promotion that men understand and trust, and we want it to be targeted to them and to meet their needs, to go where they are, and to use the language that they use. So the second, the second prong, the second approach that we use uh, is by using volunteer involvement. Virtually everything we do involves volunteers from the community. Uh, uh, we'll talk a, a lot about that today because that's part of our internet strategy as well. And then thirdly, we foster mutually beneficial relationships among healthcare providers and gay men. And again, this runs through all of our programming. We, we partner whenever we can with other organizations and with healthcare providers, and we involve gay men in those par partnerships as much as we can. The set of values that we use, um, we value the ability of gay men to make informed decisions. We think that gay men are the best arbiters of their own health. They're the people who are best able to take care of themselves and among themselves. We value the role of our community. And when I talk about community, I mean not only the gay community, not only the men's community, but the community of Vancouver, the community of British Columbia, the community of Canada. Um, and that community can also be divided in lots of other ways, ethnic, um, poor versus rich, urban versus rural, all of those communities have a role in supporting uh, foundations for healthy living. And uh, so we think it's important for, uh, to deal with all of those communities as we're working. We also value scientific research. And we value that scientific research not only for the medical information we're trying to give to, uh, to guys, but also um, research that talks about how best to communicate with men. So one of the things we're really interested in is in studies that talk about how men learn about health and how they talk about health. So when you put all three of these together, we have this triangle that we're talking about here. And I think what's, what I'm really trying to get across here is that those aren't separate things that we do. So we don't have a health promotion program, we don't have a volunteer program, we don't have a partnership program. Every single thing that we do involves all of those things. So our clinics, for instance, our partnership with BCCDC for the nursing, we have volunteer uh, uh, receptionists that work there, and we also um, are making sure that the information that we have there is, is the most quality and up-to-date that we can. Jody's going to talk a lot about what we do online, but I just wanted to touch here briefly on things like um, physical health. We talked a little bit uh, earlier in the conversation about um, our uh, fitness classes and nutrition groups. We have just, I think tomorrow night, we're having a seminar on foot health uh, by a person from the community who wanted to provide that. We have yoga, as we talked about. Uh, we have peer support at various levels. Some of it is peer uh, support, active listening. Some of it is what we call strategic advising, which is, we never use this term, but like coaching. If you have a goal, help you to reach your goal. And then we have volunteer counselors who are professional counselors from the community who come in and work with men uh, regularly. So we have up to six, between six and eight 
sessions that are available free for guys who are coming in. We do the whole range of HIV and STI testing, vaccinations, and so on. Um, and we also have a lot of campaigns that you might have seen. Uh, how many are you, of you are familiar with him? I'm just curious. So, so some of you have had a, at least a look at what we have on our website. So we have a lot of, uh, you know, what we think are engaging campaigns for guys. Um, again, all of, for instance, when we have a campaign, the models are volunteers. We have a volunteer, usually a, a championship committee, to go out in the community and sort of promote that, and also to help us develop it so that we run things past them as focus groups and so on. So those are all the areas where the where they can where they can all come together. We do a lot of collaboration with researchers as well. Uh, we have a. Uh, an application, I guess is what you'd call it, that you can have a look at. If you go to our site and look at about and look at research partnerships, you'll see we have a package that outlines how we might get involved in research. We were, as I was talking about that today, and we have a very strong position with regard to research and how we'll be involved. So all of that other stuff is not directly involved with online. So when we were trying to consider where we would go in the future, we did a community consultation. We spoke with uh, over a thousand guys, you can see. Um, uh, t uh, directly, we spoke with uh, 208 guys. Um, 118 of them were in venues like parks and the bathhouses and uh, so on. Uh, 36 consented to give us really long interviews. And then we did a survey of uh, online. We had uh, 669 usable responses to that survey. So. In this community consultation, what you'll be seeing is the results that came from that kind of a consultation that we had. That was last summer, uh, or sorry, summer of uh, 11. So I'm sorry for the tiny writing, uh, but um, essentially the age distribution here, the blue and the red that you're looking at, at the top there are the under 30s. So we had about a third of the guys were under 30 engaged in this. Uh, if you go to the, um, go to the kind of the, the turquoise color, that, that's the uh, 40 to 49 and on. So we did also have a, a reasonable uh, representation from older guys as well in this. Uh, when we talked about the internet with them, uh, we thought there were some very good opportunities here. One of the interesting things at the very top of that, the reasons guys are going online, the very top line there is time killing. So we thought there's an opportunity there. <laughs> They've already uh, probably uh, found their partner and come back home again. Um, <laughs> So we have, uh, they're also looking for sex, of course, but you look at the third line down as friendship as well. And, uh, uh, and then a little further down there, you can see relationships is in there as well. So it's not strictly for sex that guys are spending all their time online. Um, although, you know, that's kind of the first priority. Uh, if we look on the other side there, you can see the whole sort of range of what the last sex they had from an online meetup was. And uh, uh, we thought again, that was very interesting that there was um, uh, the, the ratios and proportions that were there. Guys are very successful in that. Um, again, I just want to give you some sort of sense of what we also found. So this is all of the places or the sites or apps, actually I should say not all of them, that guys use online. We were looking at this list and saying, how are we as an organization going to be able to cover all those areas. Um, it's, a, it's an impossible task. And they change all the time. I can tell you this is August 11th of a picture and I know already that there's new things that aren't on here uh, that guys are that guys are tuning into, so there's no way that we could uh, picture that we could keep up with uh, with all that that uh, change or all that activity. Um, guys online, this is their frequency online. That big yellow, I think it could have been a big yellow happy face because uh, that's every day. Uh, that's guys who go on every day. Uh, the the tan line is. Uh, uh, a few times a week. So you look at, there's a tremendous resource there. There's a tremendous ability to access guys online. And I sort of chuckled these questions too. When are they online? Um, morning, afternoon, evening, night. 40% uh, of them all said that they were on during all of those periods of time, weekdays and weekends. So that's what's going on underneath the uh, desk there. Um, so again, we knew that this was a this was not only a challenge but an opportunity for us as well. At the very bottom there is the link to that community consultation report, but it's much easier to just go to um, uh, go to our website uh, checkemout.ca and sign yourself in uh, to our newsletter. And uh, <laughs> actually, you don't have to do that, but you can search for community consultation. It'll take you to that that blog. <laughs> so 
the lesson for us from the community consultation was was just this you know um, it's too much uh, it's gay guys are everywhere they're all the time they're all unique they're not a monolithic group they have they have their preferences they have their ways of being and we have to respect the, the fact that there's that diversity of experience um, so what we really found that we needed was not necessarily an internet strategy but a a um, people strategy uh, there, the internet will kind of take care of itself in a sense, and what we wanted to do was to be able to give people a way to uh, uh, um, spread information and a way to, to partner, a way to connect up with other organizations and ourselves, and a way to uh, uh, act as ambassadors for themselves. So I'll talk a little bit more about what that strategy looks like. It's a little daunting uh, from an organizational standpoint because there are a lot of risks um, associated with that. So we have tried to, what I wanted to kind of share with you today was a little bit about our philosophy and where we tried to go from there. And then, as I say, Jody will talk a little bit more about how that looks on the ground or on the web. So we came up with a strategy for reaching, engaging, and retaining gay men and other men who have sex with men. Our idea was that we were going to train and engage men as volunteers to build capacity. So what we're going to do, and what we have been doing actually, is to, um, is to bring guys in and train them as though they were going to volunteer for us. Some are and some aren't, uh, but we give them the full nine yards. Uh, it's actually right now three, uh, three full days. And so they come in, we give them a, a full set of training. Uh, we're offering it to everybody, even if they're not going to formally volunteer for us. We know that um, these people are active in the community and they are, uh, you know, they're the guys that are going to the bathhouses and the sex parties and the bars and the beaches and all of those kind of things. So we know that if we can get them out there talking about these things, um, that's going to be successful. Uh, the other thing we wanted to do is have volunteers delivering the training. So we are, we're, you know, sort of train the trainers. One of them is because it is uh, part of the resource crunch that we have, but also more than that uh, is the fact that building that capacity then means that um, we're hoping that this will cycle and cycle and cycle, and so we'll have many people who will be extremely skilled by the end of this. Uh, well, hopefully it'll never end. And it's important in that to have clear volunteer jobs. So we're really separating them. If you, if you go through this training and then you're going to volunteer and become, uh, sometimes we call them himbots, um, <laughs> we, will, we will be very clear at what your, what your role and what your responsibility is there. And that you're now, when you're acting under the, uh, uh, as an agent of him. But otherwise, you'll have this information that you can use in your best, um, in your best life uh, without, you know, uh, just using that information. Uh, so we expect to have volunteers doing things like outreach, counseling, online engagement. We are having volunteers doing that. Um, so for me, the challenge was to develop policies and protocols and procedures to guide and protect them and uh, to commit to providing supervision one-on-one. -on -one and to create support materials for the volunteers. And also those support materials are just as good for community members to access as well. They're friendly in both ways. So one of the things that we see doing happening is that um, even nurses uh, and other healthcare providers are actually sometimes walking through our website, some of the ones that Jody will show you, with somebody beside them talking and saying, this is a good way to, to talk about this. And then, of course, the person can return to that website as well. So having those support materials available for both volunteers and community members. It's key for this that we recognize that it's all about relationships. Um, because the outcome, as I was saying here, is really is the engagement. It's not necessarily whether we get a card into somebody's hand or whether they come in and get a test right off the bat. We're looking for long-term relationships with the community, with members of the community. And they take time. It takes time to develop those relationships. It takes time to develop the trust. And uh, what we really hope is that the engagement will be the outcome here, that they'll engage with him, they'll engage within the community, and they'll engage with other men and other organizations as well. One of the things we're trying to do is to get other organizations to be better at addressing gay men's health issues. So the culture that we're putting out there is a culture of harm reduction, so risk managing your risk, knowing your risk, uh, managing um, things like testing so that you're able to um, appropriately uh, access health information. But we're also moving to a model that engages men that 
talks about benefit maximization, so having better sex, having a better life, having better partying, having a better relationships, having a better social time, and having success. Uh, so those are, those are the areas that we're kind of uh, activating as well. So it's not just avoiding risk, and it's certainly not just avoiding HIV. If you avoid HIV, you're a healthy gay man. It's simply not a, 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 you know, the, the, the truth. Uh, so we're looking at dealing with all of those other areas. Oh, I think I missed earlier when I was talking about we have four areas of health that we that we deal with. Uh, Jody mentioned them earlier as well: physical, sexual, social, and mental health. So, in all of those areas, we have programs and and people operating. And some people are very compelled about um, about sexual health uh, and interested in working in that area. Others about mental health. Others about physical health. So our yoga instructors, for instance, are very dedicated and hardworking. Uh, as our you know, our nurses and receptionists and so on. So key to this was having a handbook that's a guide to volunteering uh, that separates the volunteers from the, from the uh, clients, if you will. Um, it's a guide to their role and responsibilities. It also helps them to access those resources that I was talking about. And we're really doing that as a, as a creation. These are ongoing documents. They, they really exist. It's very funny because every time I give this to somebody, they say, well, well, it says draft. And it's sort of like, yeah, it's, this is draft 13. I think the, the uh, well, I know for sure that the one that we're using for our online protocols is draft 13, the one that, that I'll make available to you if you like. Um, so these are kind of living documents uh, now. Um, what was I going to say about this? Again, very significant in, in, in um, uh, making sure that our volunteers are very clear in their role, uh, what's going on. So in order to build that trust and build those relationships, we need to be culturally competent in online culture. So we're working with guys who are actually online, uh, who are online, who are leaders online, who are ambassadors for us, and they're telling us all the tricks and secrets. Um, we also want to be really transparent as to our motives, and that means we also have to have really good motives. And so we are finding that um, people are driven by the cause of, of, um, of uh, strengthening gay men's health. Um, we find, you know, for instance, uh, there's lots of, lots of uh, controversial issues. Uh, we're very clear on, you know, on the fact that there can be controversy and people can join in or not. Uh, issues around, um, you know, testing and, and uh, uh, all of those kind of areas. Uh, we like to keep an open dialogue and keep talking about it, but we are very clear on what our position is. We put out position papers to let people know that as well. And again, we're fine with the fact that people may not be ready to engage right now. Um, and it, as I say, when you take that long view, it, it enables you to say, well, maybe not now, maybe tomorrow. Uh, so to continue to build on those relationships, we're really looking at those issues of privacy and confidentiality, making sure that we have a reasonable uh, engagement that doesn't preclude that privacy and conf confidentiality. We are respecting a diversity of experience and viewpoint. I can't uh, emphasize enough the variety of guys that uh, come and see us. Um, and are involved and their viewpoints. You know, uh, we say when we put something, you know, our, we have Extra West there, which is the, the gay newspaper. And if there's a new torso on the front of it, then the next issue they get half the letters saying, why do you always have to put a new torso on it? And the other half saying, more new torsos. <laughs> so we know that gay men definitely have a different difference of experience and that we need to be, uh, we need to be talking to all of them and they need to be talking to each other. Uh, also, guys are at different points in their journey. When we talk about gay men and men who have sex with men or other men who have sex with men, they may be just merely at a different point in time. We're talking about personal and professional boundaries online. Um, again, having conversations about that, creating spaces for that, uh, dealing with anonymity, uh, which we were talking about as one of the three A's of the internet. We're having and we're training people in protocols for boundary creation and maintenance. And we're training in on, as part of our general training, we're training in online safety because we think that's an area where men are often vulnerable um, as they begin to access the internet and are kind of overwhelmed by the, by the information that's there. We're still working on issues like uh, aliases and usage and how as an organization we can be transparent but at the same time have volunteers who don't necessarily want, you know, to be mix their personal lives and their, and their online lives. And so um, as we go forward with uh, online outreach that Jody's talking about, you know, we're looking at a way to just be transparent about that and say, yes, sometimes people are using aliases. Uh, we're also working with uh, site content service providers. One of the things that we find is that 
there's been, and I've heard, certainly had reports from service providers that they are tired of uh, being abused in those in those relationships. Uh, so you know, they get all set up, and then they get complaints from their from their from their customers that they've sent a question and they get no answer, or uh, they were treated poorly, or they were disrespected. So we really want to make sure that we respect their request. They often have agreements now. When we sign those agreements, or we don't sign them, but if we do sign them, we we uh, uh, we respect them. But also when we're working with them, be aware that they have interests that may not be aligned with gay men's interests or with a healthcare provider's interests. And so there may be some negotiation and there may need to be some uh, you know, clarity around those kind of things as we go forward. In the whole area of this is involving community members. Development, uh, right from the start, right from the concept, as you can see from the community consultation, all the way to having uh, Jody's working with a group of, of experts in, in the community he'll be talking about. Um, but really what we want to do is create leaders and ambassadors uh, for gay men's health who are dedicated to strengthening gay men's health. We want to then customize that experience for them. Then we want to revise it and then we're going to repeat that process and we're going to bring in new people and we're going to talk to them, we're going to engage them. And that's really the concept that we have of going forward. So that means in our training <clears throat> we're developing core competency statements. So we need these are our core competencies for volunteers in those various positions. We're creating those training modules with their clearly expressed learning outcomes. We're doing a self-test on those outcomes and a test uh, after the uh, after the experience. And then the the potential volunteer does a self-evaluation: How am I doing on these core competencies? And the supervisor does an evaluation: How are you doing on these core competencies? And then they get together and see whether they're in agreement. Surprisingly, mostly they are actually. Uh, so guys will say, yeah, I need more training in that, or, uh, you know, I'm not comfortable in that area. We also need to talk about documentation. Um, so we need to have some kind of records, but we are really concerned, especially now, about uh, privacy and legal issues. We need to have incident reports. We need to be able to support people through incidents that they may run into as they're doing outreach, or, or online as well. Um, and we need to be able to follow that up. And we need to make sure that they have good access to that training resource materials and know where it is and it's re really easy to access for them. And then we really, it's not only tracking volunteers, but everything we do, we treat volunteers as if they were employees in that sense of, um, except for we don't pay them anything. <laughs> uh, we don't even uh, use an honorary system. Um, but we do, you know, we do want to count their, their contribution and respect their contribution. When we're looking at resources uh, and content for it, we've got there's a million different ways of getting that, but a lot of it that we're getting right now is volunteer generated, and uh, and we're also doing a lot of links with partnerships, and so that makes it much easier. And then finally, we have to talk about the technology, whether we're going to be using our own technology in our offices or people's technology, their phones uh, to to connect up with. So we're going to have to have some rules about that, uh, some some protocols around that. Uh, it's the same with using um, the internet services itself. So we feel a lot of times it makes much more sense for us to go to where guys are rather than trying to create a site and have them come there. It just hasn't really taken off. So we're using public and social media that way. And uh, and again, again, the rest is a little bit of common sense. We do need to make sure that we have some kind of firewalls and some kind of blocking, but that we can be as open as we possibly can in that interactive environment. That also talks about things like moderating discussions and so on. Those are areas where we're going to have to look at. So I've gotten through it.